Uh, so this office has a sound booth, and we're gonna see how soundproof it really is. It wasn't completely soundproof, but it was really trippy because you can't really hear anything when you're in there. Um, and total silence is very spooky. Tip number one, put some tape down, especially if you're doing shoe molding to floor, and especially if that's a composite, weirdly grooved floor, put down some tape. It would make your life so much easier. Also, I used the wrong tape. There was paint everywhere. Really disappointed because I took so much time to make sure I got these lines right, but the paint still went under the tape, so I recommend using frog tape. It works. It'll work a lot better, and you'll actually be 10 steps ahead of Chaboy who did not use frog tape. Moving on. Now, after you've got your frog tape and you're already using the correct ingredients for this cake, go ahead and cut about two foot long strips. Place those along the shoe molding. It's a lot easier to get super, super straight lines with multiple medium sized length pieces than trying to do one piece the whole way down. When possible, go ahead and slip that paint underneath any wood that you're going to paint to prevent any further drippage. When using tape in tight corners like this, I recommend taking some scissors out and giving that a nice square cut so that you can line up that edge perfectly parallel with the edge of whatever edge needs to be edged and edge. And now I've got some perfectly straight lines with the incorrect tape, which will do no good because it's still going to drip. For any surfaces that are parallel with the ground, even if you can't see any, you can pretty much bet that there's going to be a whole bunch of belly button lint on these things. So go ahead and take whichever finger you like and give it a nice rub down and then you can just go ahead and toss that on the floor since the floor is gray and no one will ever see it. Painting is time consuming. Get cozy. One of the biggest things I've learned with any sort of time consuming, slow, processes like this is get comfortable. If you're at a weird position, you're going to fatigue really easily. If you fatigue, you're not going to have a clean stroke and you're just going to have a miserable time. So I put down a little floor mat and I just went ahead and laid on that, put on some tunes and I was off to paint land. Depending on your skill level, you don't always have to use tape. For example, on these little ledges here, you can just use pressure going nice and slowly and you'll end up with a really clean line. Always start with a little bit of paint, and if you need to add more, you can add more, but it's a lot harder to start with a lot of paint and try to subtract it or get it and move in somewhere else. You're gonna end up with a bunch of streaks or drips or blops or bloops. So again, be patient, take your time, start with a little bit of paint, and if you need to add more, you can add more. When you need to get paint into tight areas, put your brush maybe an inch before where you want the paint to start, and then instead of moving your brush to the starting point, just apply pressure and that'll cause the bristles to expand and stretch out a little bit, reaching that starting point. A little crunchy granola side note here, my mind goes off into all different directions when I'm doing things like painting, and it was a really interesting thing that I noticed uh, is when I started thinking about things that stressed me out, like, oh my god, I have so much painting to do, I would immediately make a mistake. Versus if I was just in the moment thinking about whatever, or, or maybe even not in the moment, but thinking about something neutral or positive, I didn't make any mistakes. And I just think that's just like a lesson in life. Thoughts become things. If you're, if you're thinking bad thoughts, you're gonna mess up your paint job. So have fun, play some music, get cozy, bring a friend, bring some cloths. You got this.